Welcome, folks. Welcome to another segment of Cube TV. That's right, we're on a really good show. Now, I'm going to talk to you about something that um, I find most fascinating today. I just got off the phone with my mother, and you know, I just call her every now and then to see how she's doing and everything, you know. And, you know, something good that a son should do, you know. We don't live near or any of that sort of thing, but you know, something there. And you know, my mother, she's like super religious. I think I told you about this. You know, she has like a million Bibles and crucifixes all over the place. And you know, we got in this old conversation. It was so funny, you know. She said, you know, I'm going to ask you this question. I know you don't really want to hear it, but you still wearing them satanic symbols. Look, God damn it, look. I got a pentagram on my finger, this ring, and I got this pentagram on my dag on neck. I'm not taking them off, no time soon. I sleep, eat, wash up, and fuck in these damn things. So I'm not taking them off, no time soon. I mean, I didn't tell her, I didn't say, I didn't say it to her like that, but I just told her, yes, I still got them on. You know, and of course, she went on to say, well, you know, you know them like they, those names of the devil, why would you want to wear them things? You know that you know they're not right. Look, I'm going to tell you something. I don't see these things cutting off my life support. I, you know, as far as, like, health-wise. I don't, I don't think they're possessed. You know what? No, I'm turning into an animal. You know, it's like, it, you know, you know, but it really gets me. You know, with the, what's up with the things with the, you know, the, the, you know, with the apparel? You know, it's just like, it's like what gets me. It's like, you know, with people in the piercings. You know, I mean, I, people got this old thing, like, if you got a piercing here or a piercing on your left ear, you're gay. You know, what the hell? Who the hell cares? Bull crap. You know, you know, I just, just try to tell my mom, nope, I'm not taking them off. They not they never come off. You have you will have to kill me to get these off me. Yes, you would have to kill me upon my damn corpse to take these damn boys off. You know that that was one conversation. You know it was just it's just funny. Don't you just love mothers? You know they just you know just just trying to look out for the kids. You know anyway. Another little subject we got into. Oh man, oh, we got into the religion thing. And I think I told y'all, you know, I'm not an atheist, and I never said I didn't believe in God, you know, I just like to keep an open mind, you know, I just keep an open mind, like that. I don't do no praying or none of that, you know, none of that, you know, that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, we got this old thing about, you know, the Adam and Eve, and, you know, and what, and basically what sparked the whole conversation was, you know, me believing in God. You know, and I just told him, I said, I like to, you know, keep an open mind. And he said, well, you know, God is good, and God is this, and God, oh, like, oh, boy, he'll be go about this. And, you know, and then she, then, you know, then she sat up there and said, oh, something about, she saw my, my dead father in the house. I said, look, as far as I'm concerned, he can stay in there, too. I don't want him coming over here. You know, I, look, I have to deal with him in life. I don't need to deal with him in death. He was the son of you know what? Man, I, you know, I don't need to deal with that. That's the just, that's just scare. You know, um, you know, I guess the, the, the whole, the core of the subject, we got into the whole Adam and Eve thing. And he said, well, you know, it's a snake and everything like that. And I said, look, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, who do you think put the snake there? God put the snake there. You know, I said, no offense, but the way I look at it from the perspective like this, the flaw is not so much in the creation, is is in the creator. Because the like they say, why in the world would you put a snake down there to set their intent, you know? And then she went on this whole thing, well, oh, you know, you know, you know he was one of the most beautiful angels and you know, and you know, God read him and you know, he he wanted him to bow down to him from the beginning. And look, look, if that was the case, you know, look, if you're the creator and you create something, and you know they want you to bow down to them, I would have done, I would have done away with his ass like freaking, like quick, quick. I mean, 
mean, really. I, I would have just, I would just like, be gone, you gone. You know, the hell with that. And you know, and then, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm even thinking, I'm thinking it like this. I said either he just didn't give a damn, and you know, he just wasn't too smart enough to realize it. You know, like, wait a minute, you know, so I just created the devil. You know, this motherfucker is gonna, is gonna fuck up shit. A little bit. I don't care. So I'm God. So I mean, what can he get? What can he really do? Uh, like fuck up humanity for for life, for eternity. You know, and you know, just let that around, around. Or it was the case is, you know, well, I created it. You know, I love all creation, so I don't want to kill it because I made it. You know, it's my creation. I feel bad about it. if I if I kill him. You know, I don't want to do that. You know, I want all the angels to know about it. You know, like what the hell? You know, I, you know what? You know what is the deal with that? And then here's my other issue. Let's go back. Let's go to the Garden of Eden. Why in the hell would you put a tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden? You got everything up in there. What is the purpose of that? You know, I mean, really, what is it? I mean, you know, Adam. I mean, first you just had Adam, and you know, of course, you know, God, and it was God and Adam. Of course, he didn't want to get gay, so, you know, he had to create Eve, you know, that sort of thing, whatever. And, and you know, okay, everything was all right. And then, you know, Eve, he's that, you know, and, and boom, and then Abby's that, and then everything goes to hell. And here, and here my mother, she's going to say, well, you know, they had sex, too. You know, as she ate that apple, she had sex. What? They had sex? No shit. You mean tell me if if Eve would have never ate the apple, we would never we would not be having sex. Well, you know what? I want a I want a, a round of applause. Thank you for eating that apple. Then you have sex, people. That's right. We can have sex. You know, we can know that we naked. You know, I mean that's awesome. You know, I, like look. You know, my whole thing is, you know, he had to put it there for a reason. You know, and you know, that my whole thing is, alright, it's called the tree of knowledge. What the hell is that? If it's a tree of knowledge, then you create, you create these little beings on the planet. You know, you only want them to know what you want them to know. You don't want them to know too much. If they know, if they know what you know, it's a possible possibility they might uprise and, you know, try to take your position. You know, so I'm looking at it from that perspective. You know, God said, don't go over there <clears throat> to the tree. You know, the, the snake or whatever, you know, the devil said, this and said, you know what? I'm pissed at God. I'm going to fix his ass. I'm going to tip one of his creations and have him eat this apple. And so they can realize what's really going on. They ate the apple. Basically, is yes, for that brief moment they they saw they saw what God saw. Look, I could look, I could apply this jump to the dad on Matrix. I mean, you know, you look at it like right? you're living in this world. You know, you take the bit, you find out what it's really like. What the hell? You know, what I mean, look, why would why would God want anybody to set up there and know what He knows anyway? Just let us live in illusion all day long. <laughs> you know that. You know, the, you know, basically the illusion that we need him to survive. You know, without him, we're not. You know, that's 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 the concept. That's what that's what I'm drawing it from. You know, and I even brought up, and I even brought up another subject that comes to mind. I said, even God, like I said, even God is aware of everything that happened. He just just don't give a fuck, and he just sets stuff in the motion. Said, well, let people just have their own free will. Or he, you know, he just, or he just don't, or he just, just won't interfere. He just like, well, you know, I'm just gonna let stuff play out. I don't know, maybe I'll come down and then intervene, and you know, let my presence be known and see what happens. You know, I, it doesn't, you know, it just absolutely doesn't make it. I mean, the Adam and Eve thing. I mean, the, the, or I just say the thing in Genesis is so flawed. That's just like, here's another thing that gets me. Both the Cain and Abel. Now, when Cain killed Abel, now supposedly the crown was cursed. And, you know, as my mother says it, and God couldn't set up there and he couldn't fix shit because the crown was cursed. If God is supposed to be all-powerful, 
Then why in the hell did he just make the ground on curves? You know, now this, once again, flaws in the Genesis story. I mean, even with that Cain and Abel, that bullshit, you know. And then she told me some other jokes about the Cain and Abel. She said Cain was darker than Abel. What is that supposed to mean for me? Are you saying that um, in actuality, I'm Cain? Yeah, buddy, I'm Cain, yeah. That's why man, that's why man can't get it together. Cause you know, cause of, because of Cain. Oh, Legacy of Cain. Man, isn't that a video game? Yeah! That's a video game! Legacy of Cain! Yeah, baby! You know, I'm just saying, you know, it this it's amazing how, you know, the, you know, I just so easily punch holes in this stuff. Uh, you know, and then here's another one. Here's the fixer rock. Uh, she told me, uh, she told me that God gave her the power to, to, to talk to the devil and control the devil. Ah, uh, you know what? I want to give you a round of applause if you could show me that. I mean, not on paper, but physically. I would love to see that. You know, you gonna go talk to the devil like what you what you set up twenty two tables. And sit down and you know have a conversation. So, well, this is this is what I want you to do. You know, um, I believe in God. Uh, you know, I'm gonna say these words, and um, you're gonna have to go back to hell. You know that. You know that's gonna be that's gonna be our agreement. You know that that's the way it looks to me. She said, you know, God told her how to talk to the devil, like it's a like it's a conference or something. You know, like God said, well, you know. I created the devil. Now you know the thing is, you know you just you just can't you can't just tell the devil to go to hell. You have to talk to him in such a way where he understands, you know, the language, so he can go back to hell. You know, I say I didn't even know there was a way that you could talk to the devil. I you know I thought that was something that was just like revised. I mean, well, I, I mean, reserved for like another group altogether. I, you know, I was just like, wow, I didn't, I never knew that. That blew my mind when she told me about that one. Um, something else that I really also found funny too. We, I, I, I got to the subject of self-preservation. I said, you know what? All right, here's a subject for you. The subject being is, this is a bunch of people you in a satellite you hide from other people. Baby's making sound. You gotta suffocate the baby so y'all can all survive. What you gonna do? She tells me, she said, she about to die. So that means the baby dies and everyone dies. She says that's evil. Look, I'm gonna tell you, y'all don't got nothing to do with self preservation. I mean, look, call me bad, whatever you wanna call it. You know, the thing is, I don't let stuff like that, you know, cloud my nerves. That's what I said. That's one of the problems with you religious type people. Y'all let certain stuff like that cloud your judgment. You know, y'all can't make rational situations. I mean, well, rational decisions. You know, y'all gotta go. Y'all gotta take it to God. Like, like, you know, it's okay to have your belief, but when it starts to affect your life, you know, I told my mother that and she's a little bit affecting my life. No, I don't mean like that. I mean like, you know, affecting your life. Like not allowing you to make decisions, you know, like someone beating you with a baseball bat and hoping God's going to sit there and zap them away. No, motherfucker. Yo, you got to get the hell out or freaking kill their ass before they kill you. You know, she's telling me, she said, you know, if someone breaks in the house, God will destroy them. <laughs> I, you know what? I would love to see that too. You know, I'm going to tell you, if that was the case, that would be like the ultimate home defense system. It would be like, you know, you know, hell, the hell with, what is it, APT or whatever the hell it is, home. I just got G-O-D over there, you know, someone breaking my house, they get zapped. They're like, zoom, they're like, damn, what was this, this is a G-O-D, you know, and uh, G-O-D did it. i like, wow, G-O-D, I got to get me one of them. I acquire it. 
Uh, you know, you just talk to you know, you just you just you just talk to the man in the sky, the invisible man in the sky, you know, and you get GOD set up for free. You don't even have to pay me that shit. You know, I said, Dad, that's awesome. Yeah, you better just hope that shit works when someone breaks in your house. Because I told her, I said, look, I'm gonna use it as an example for you. Alright. You eat food, right? Okay, you know it's a possibility you could get poisoned and die, right? Okay, well, let's take that percentage. There's a 2% chance it could happen. Let's say it could happen. All right, but do you stop eating? No, you don't stop eating. You keep on eating. All right, now let's apply this situation to someone breaking in your house and killing you. All right, there is a percentage or a possibility that someone could break in your house. All right, now my question is, which choice are you going to choose? Are you going to choose a possibility and wait for God to zap away the bad guy? Or are you going to take some type of initiative to try to escape or defend yourself? Now, you know, what sounds more rational to you? I would love to get some questions and comments on this if possible. You know, this to see to get your take on this. And I'm going to wrap this up. And this has been a cute dumb moment. Thank you. And thank you. Thank, I'm thanking everybody for watching my videos. And putting in your comments. I don't care if they're rude or whatever the case may be. Uh, thank you.